How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with the first video of 2023 and right now in SoCal we are in the middle of a crazy rainstorm. Right now it is actually fairly nice out but it will be raining in the next couple hours sadly. So I figured today would be a nice day, a great way to start the year by reflecting on all the money I've wasted on this 2006 Mustang GT right here from the moment I bought it the price I bought it for and I'm gonna try to list every mod I've done to it over the years and every dollar amount now obviously I can't remember everything so there might be edits here and there tossed in and I'm gonna try to get the numbers as accurate as possible that being said I take pride in two things one this build is not sponsored by mommy and daddy and I don't really take handouts for this build like most of the parts on this car, I'd say a good 90% of the parts on this car, I paid for with my own money, full price. I don't, I don't go and ask companies for handouts because that's, it's not your build then, you know? This is my build. This is something that I spent my hard-earned money on, and a lot of it was before YouTube too. So let's go ahead and get started. So I bought this car here, I believe in 2017, for $25,000. And when I bought it, it looked very similar. It had a built three valve motor with a saline supercharger. Now right there, you guys might be saying, Drew, <laughs> that's bought not built. In my opinion, it was a great foundation and it got me started on the platform. I mean, building a three valve, nobody really wants to do that anyways, but this one already had one. So I knew that the, the potential to go up was great. Anyways, from there, I believe the first things I did to it was change the suspension because it still had like stock sway bars. It had stock lower control arms. It had all the, pretty much the whole rear end. I went ahead and redid and it did help it a bit. But the next mod is what really started to cost me some money. I got some new wheels and tires. The stuff I did to the rear end was about $1,100. And then uh, my new wheels and tires at the time, they were some American Muscle FR500 wheels and they were fairly cheap, not gonna lie. I think with the wheels and tires, I was probably in it probably around 1,500 bucks. It's not these that you're seeing right here. And then it started to snowball from then. Once I got the right wheel and tire set up on the car, I could hook and what that caused the car to do was destroy the transmission i got a bluetooth input shaft so yeah the tr 3650 that comes in this car destroyed to smithereens it's actually in my bedroom it's holding up my desk right now it's adorable but um yeah i then went and bought a t56 six-speed kit which runs about six thousand dollars i want to say right around there maybe more maybe less i installed that myself and that was actually one of my first live streams on the channel which was very funny and then from there <laughs> it was all downhill from there at that point i was happy with the car the car was performing great i knew i had a solid motor i had a solid transmission and i knew i could turn up the power so what do you do you plasti dip your car i believe that was about 1500 bucks or so it wasn't that expensive i plastic up the whole car made it look nice and pretty but right before that i did go ahead and buy a new hood which is actually still this hood right here i bought a cow hood i believe it's from true fiber i want to say probably around a thousand bucks i don't remember exactly how much it was so yeah with the new big old mighty cow hood what do you do well you change your supercharger setup at that point i wasn't happy with the saline blower i was pretty maxed out on it the car was only making 500 horsepower so i talked to my local tuner and he told me buy this pro charger kit you'll make 700 horsepower all day to the wheels easily so i shelled out eight thousand dollars and i bought this pro charger kit and the car actually made less power my tuner was an idiot <laughs> i'm happy i don't go to him anymore the car actually made less power i went from making 500 wheel 500 torque all the way down to 450 so the car was actually slower it did sound great though listen here But that was a big slap in the face. I thought I was gonna make 700 right off the rip, which just, it wasn't, wasn't gonna happen. So then my tuner said to go an E85 the car, which on this car requires a full fuel return system, which is about $2,000 for the system. And then you need another thousand or so for injectors right there. And now we can make big power. Now with all that said, we can make big power and we made 650 and the car wasn't even running right. The car was cutting. It was way too much boost for the blower. We were over spinning the supercharger. And uh, that was because he told me to buy a specific pulley. I bought that pulley, was way too small, too small of a pulley. So I said, you know what? Let me see what he has to say. And if he says something stupid, I'm leaving. And he said something stupid, so I left. He said, you're maxed out on your on your heads, Drew. You can't flow any more air through those heads. None, um, you're done and you need to port those heads. So I said, Mm, let's go get a second opinion. I took my car to a new tuner, 
which is the tuner I still go to to this day out in Simi Valley, Addiction Motorsports. And with just a simple tune and the correct pulley, we gained 150 horsepower, making this car ride around 700 wheel horsepower. But I wasn't done yet. Right there, I just want to say the quick retune was probably. And I, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna quote retunes and stuff like that because that's stupid. From there though, I wanted more. I was only at like you know high sixes, maybe low sevens. I wanted more power, so I went ahead and bought a set of comp cams, stage two blower cams for the car, which really woke it up. That put us right at 770 wheel horsepower, which was like it was it was crazy. I mean, a little tiny three valve making 770 like uh, excuse me have you ever seen that before at the time i hadn't and i thought it was really cool because a lot of people saw the car and didn't know what to expect and they were getting dusted by <laughs> an 06 it was very fun i loved the car at that stage it sounded great the shifts were perfect i'll throw in some clips here it was like literally the the best car at the time but it didn't last too long sadly um, as we were building the car the bolts that hold on the pulley for the pro charger setup which is screwed into my dampener my crank dampener those bolts kept snapping so logically we upgraded the strength of the bolts we went to like some crazy they were like it was like for cams it was hardware for cams and it worked it held definitely held in those bolts um but sadly the next thing that broke was the crank and the motor was toast that was the end of the three valve saga for this so now we can talk about more modern day let's pop this hood actually right before the motor blew i forgot to mention i did buy a set of esrs um and those were one of the few sponsored parts i paid 600 bucks for them still so i'm being honest and transparent with you guys but i love those wheels i really like the concave of them i believe they were the, the rf1s or something like that or the rf2s one or the other love those wheels i had a nice set of mickey thompson's on it it just looked super aggressive um but anyways yeah i forgot to mention those and i love those wheels those were oh, i loved them anyways so from there i was debating on what to do with it obviously you guys have followed me for a while so you guys know that there's a gen 3 coyote in here um but at the time i was looking at even the four valve the cobra motor the the older cobra motor though but those are apparently tanks and can handle crazy horsepower is going to do a four valve cobra twin turbo system like like some crazy shit and then my tuner luckily said hey man that's going to be a lot of money just coyote swap it it'll be expensive but it'll be a lot simpler and everything will just be direct drop in like the, the kit that we were going to do was a custom kit which i still think would have been very badass to this day to have some giant you know spooly snails underneath the hood but i could also see if i want to grow from there it'd be very difficult because it'd be a custom one-off kit and finding parts it just you know everything would be custom from there on forward and we went ahead and did a gen 3 coyote with a gen 5 3 liter whipple and the car right out of the gates made 925 wheel horsepower which was ridiculous on a stock block car 925 absolutely ridiculous so obviously i needed to upgrade my wheels and tires again because the car wasn't hooking anymore so we went ahead and hit up esr and they made me some custom three-piece speed locks which are actually in my garage right now sorry one of the barrels is broken um and then they made me a matching set of three-piece front wheels so those also were sponsored they were still three thousand dollars because i paid for the materials and they paid for the work um so still discounted but not that bad three thousand dollars for the wheels and then probably another thousand for the tires or so and we were in it i mean oh my god the money's just racking up at this point i'm also not really including like wear items like brakes clutch and stuff like that that shit's stupid but anyways so we're in the car <laughs> The swap costed me right around $27,000, which I know sounds ridiculous, but there was a lot of stuff that I needed. Obviously the block and everything, which I believe I got for a pretty good price of, it was either 75 or 8,500 bucks for the actual Gen 3 Coyote itself. And then I wanna say a similar price, 75 to 85 for the Whipple. So as you can see, we're already halfway there. And then everything else I wanted, I told them I wanted the best radiator money could buy. I wanted an upgraded cooling system. Um, I wanted it pretty much this thing to just run bulletproof and not have to worry about overheating any of that stuff i don't have an ice tank yet sadly although that will be coming very soon um but yeah i wanted this thing to run very solid and solid it did it ran very solid i mean for a price of twenty seven thousand dollars that's more than the car's price itself honestly while i was doing it i was thinking to myself drew you could have just bought a new s550 10 speed and just did it to that but there's no style in that that's that's the easy way out you know rolling through gears while gapping people is a lot more fun than 
and I got the McLaren for that, so I don't really got to do anything about that. Anyways, the car ran great. We did, like I said, the wheels and tires after that. Car was damn near popping wheelies. It felt amazing until it didn't. Out of nowhere, luckily, we got saved, but the Whipple seized up. Apparently, this was a common issue among Whipples back when, I don't know, I guess the Gen 5 just came out or something like that, but the Whipple actually seized up. I thought I blew the motor. I was on my way to a race meet, and I was racing this dumb S2000. Fuck S2000s, by the way. I was racing him, and <laughs> waste of gas also, but I just wanted to just assert dominance you know when they see a three valve they don't think 925 horsepower i wanted to show him what 925 horsepower looked like and i did for a split second and then the whipple seized up and i had zero horsepower so you live and you learn anyways from there i got really paranoid of blowing the motor so i said mm, i'm already taking it to your shop buddy might as well go ahead and just build it so we went ahead and did a 5.2 gen 3 build so it's a 5.2 bottom end with Gen 3 heads and internals. So it's it's a weird concept. I mean, I've talked to my tuner about it and he says it's pretty common to do. Like this is like a, a true tested method. And I mean, I haven't had any issues yet, but we did the 5.2 bottom and we did the top end um, just stock and everything like that. And then I got the Whipple warranted. So we're good there. And I didn't, you know, I didn't gain power. It's the same thing. If anything, I might've even lost a little bit of power because I got forged internals now, which is a little bit heavier. But the car is ready to make a solid 11, 1200 horsepower if I want to. To do that, I need to go ahead and upgrade my fuel system. I need to do a 10 rib setup because you're not gonna make 1200 horsepower on a six rib. It's just not gonna happen. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a few things I would have to do to do that. And I am planning on doing that this year, which is one of my goals for 2023. I wanna see this thing break a thousand. I wanna see the Supra break a thousand. Not the McLaren, I don't know. The McLaren might just break. Um, but yeah, I have some goals. Um, that last trip, I think, cost me right around. Um, I had to buy the block and everything, which was, I think it was right around 8,500 with my core. With my core, I wanna say, yeah, I think it was right around 8,500 with my core. And then the labor and stuff was tossed in. And then I also bought some other stuff um, to prepare myself for the next upgrade. So I want to say, I want to say it was right around 12 grand. I think it was right around 12. Yes. Or 10. We'll just say 11. We'll just, we'll just play it safe and say 11. But it doesn't end there. I mean, that was my last major purchase for this car, but the build was still not complete. It still looked like a 06 three valve, which is whack. So from there, if you guys have seen in recent days, we've upgraded the looks of it with some nice aftermarket headlights i think the best set you can get for this car um we also got a set of aerospace components drag racing brakes which is one of the sponsored pieces on this car as you can see i have very little sponsored pieces on this car that is one of them um i want to say that i still paid about 800 bucks for those so nothing's free on the car that's for sure we also did some vents from track spec as you can see Nice cooling mods there. Make sure she's running nice and cool. We got some uh, fender vents, which are functional. They are straight through, allowing all the air to escape. Um, we also are doing, and this is what we're still doing to this day, um, we did a front air dam to force all the air into the intercooler and stuff. And we are doing a flat bottom. But I think before I do the flat bottom, I wanna buy an aftermarket K-member um, because I don't wanna have to buy it later and then redo everything. So. That'll be ordered up within the next couple weeks. Oh, I forgot to mention, I wrapped it once too. I guess I'll just throw this in wherever I wrapped it. I wrapped it myself. That was also sponsored um, and I hated it. It was the worst experience of my life. Wrapping sucks. I'm sorry. At least wrapping with bad material sucks. Oh yeah, and then I tried to plastic it myself too. That sucked as well. Although I think that was more my fault because I did it on a very cold day in a very cramped garage. So that sucked as well but yeah i think that's it i mean uh, i forgot yeah we got the grill too i mean those are little things like i want to say the headlights were about 500 the grill was i don't know 200 bucks maybe the fender vents maybe 200 bucks those vents up there maybe 400 bucks i could be off with the prices a little bit but that's a pretty good estimate on how much i've spent i'm actually curious because obviously i haven't calculated this myself i'm racking up the numbers in my head and i'm trying to figure out exactly how much i spent oh there's a couple more things why did i even mention this this was expensive as well underneath the rear end we did a whole cortex watch link and torque arm that was also sponsored but discounted it wasn't that much of a hookup i think it was like 30 percent off which is still great i still appreciate it but yeah it wasn't it wasn't a crazy hookup there and then we also did 
Lakewood Industries drag racing shocks and Cobra Jet racing um, springs. So yeah, I'm forgetting all these little things. Oh, there's more things on the inside I forgot. I mean, this is like miscellaneous shit, but we did carbon fiber interior here and there. Um, I wanna say that piece, the actual center console, like 300 bucks, 100 bucks. This very pointless Steeda X brace, I think is right around 250. And then the Shelby strut tower brace back there is right around, I think, 200 i don't know i could be wrong so maybe we'll just say another 400 i think that's it now i mean uh i have a digital display but that's not that expensive and i have gauges and uh, we'll just leave those out those, those are miscellaneous expenses but i think that's it i think that covers every dollar i've spent on this very lucky 2006 i mean most most 2006s they don't get this type of love so you know you got to show your love to the to the milfs out here anyways um yeah big things coming in 2023 i do want to break a thousand horsepower on this whatever it takes um even if i gotta work the corner i gotta do it if you guys haven't followed me on instagram yet you guys definitely haven't seen but i ordered a built motor for the supra so whenever i get that finished we'll make a very similar video to this and then i also am probably going to turbo this instead of the nitrous that'll be done very soon anyways guys hopefully you did enjoy this video if you did please let me know down below and comment down below your new year's resolution uh my three i want to say is i'm gonna eat less fast food um i'm gonna lose weight i'm gonna i'm gonna commit to the gym and um i'm gonna post more irl videos for you guys rather than like reddit videos anyways let me know yours down below hope you guys have a great year and let's jump into 2023 ready to kick some ass i don't know <laughs> anyways guys subscribe and until next video peace